Greetings and welcome back to another discussion. Today it's both my privilege and pleasure to bring you Demiro, a friend of mine, who I'd like to say has a certain expertise in the matter we're about to discuss today, which is to say gaming. A veteran gamer, specifically a veteran of World of Warcraft, who has had a, uh, I guess you could say, a, a turnaround of opinion, uh, a change of mind, however you want to frame it, uh, concerning gaming. And we're going to talk about that, but also this is the general state of gaming, why maybe gaming isn't what it used to be, because I do think uh, these are different times compared to even 10 years ago. So with that said, uh, I will turn over the podium to Domiro to talk about, I mean, maybe you can talk a little bit about first why your background in gaming and, and you know, how the how much you played of World of Warcraft, and then really what led you to the current decision you decided to take. Well, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, it's firstly. my honor. Uh, likewise. Um, yeah. So, well, to start off with my, my gaming uh, history, I've been gaming, well, I'm in my early 30s now, but I've been gaming for a very long time. Like My first memories as a kid were from playing video games with family, like uh, memories of my aunt and my mother playing duck hunt and so that's also where i started with lemmings duck hunt uh i may have crept in some mortal combat um and i've it, it's just been a constant in my life um pc gaming for a long time but also all the consoles i've had some pretty for most people obscure consoles from atari lynx and jaguar to well you know all the all the uh normal ones like nintendo's um you name it, and I've probably played on it or have, uh, owned it. Um, yeah, and what, World of Warcraft, uh, played a lot of that. In general, I'll, I'll now play virtually anything. Um, but my decision or my decision, my sort of uh, discontent with gaming is something that's crept up throughout the years. Uh, if we're being specific about World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft uh, is a game made uh, by Blizzard Entertainment back in the uh, back in the time. Uh, yeah, back in back in 2008, it was um, Blizzard was acquired by Activision, and Activision is headed by Bobby Kotick. Uh, Bobby Kotick is somebody who um, is really hell bent on making money. Now. Uh, principally, I don't obviously I don't have a problem with this. Anybody wants to make money, and that's fine. Um, but he will do it, or and he's said as much. There's interviews uh, floating around the internet um, that he wants essentially he wants an IP that he can just milk until the end of time, and that is something that, for instance, World of Warcraft has become. I don't know whether. That whole scenario is has set a precedent, but you do see that as of uh, recent, I don't know, let's say last five, starting perhaps the last 10 years, you see that games are being played in a relatively safe manner because uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the gaming industry as a whole has just exploded. There's just a massive amount of money in there, um, lots of shareholders, and they want to see returns. Um, so taking risk is something, and by taking risk, I mean trying to be original is something that's uh, pushed back in favor of cookie cutter formula games. That doesn't have to be a problem if it's your thing. Some some people are fine with games playing in a certain way. Specifically, those games um, are within a niche they like. Uh, you know, if, if you're really into first person games, then the umpteenth installment of Call of Duty, yeah, that's, that's great to you, but it doesn't necessarily, well, it absolutely doesn't, um, it doesn't push the envelope, it doesn't do anything new. Uh, and over time, you just have this sort of gaming entropy. And that as a whole, uh, I mean, I still play games, but as a whole, it's just, you know, my hobbies have shifted after uh, some 30 odd years, which is a bit strange. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, go on. Well, it's it's sort of uh, in a, in its own way without anyone forcing you or forcing your hand a natural evolution. When I was growing up, uh, gaming was something for children or or freaks, mm. and 
no, if you were uh, gaming in your 30s, you were extremely odd, to say the <laughs> least, uh, let alone your 40s or anything like that. So it, many people would just stop or play in secret, and you sort of follow the path that you sort of naturally easing up uh, as you're in your 30s. But I mean, to add my own two cents, I think um, in addition to the things you mentioned, part of it is uh, what psychologists sometimes call the the paradox of choice, when you have a lot of things on offer, whatever it might be, I mean, the classic example is a bunch of marmalades you can buy or jams at a supermarket, and there used to be three or four, and you had your favorite, and you like this one, second best, whatever, it, it was okay, then they introduced 30 new flavors, and you don't even know what to choose anymore. I think in part because the game industry is the biggest entertainment industry in the world now and has been for a while there's just an enormous amount of choice but with the problem with enormous amount of choice is the more choice you have and i think this kind of partly speaks to what you're saying the less differentiated um, the choices themselves become which is to say yeah it used to be you had strawberry marmalade and uh, grape marmalade and, and and orange marmalade and raspberry marmalade and you know those are distinct but now they're all sort of you know, like this sort of little little bit of raspberry and a little bit of whatever and you can't even tell the difference anymore i think mm. a lot of that has happened in the gaming world where games have for better or worse uh developed into very definitive genres and these genres have always existed to varying degrees but the genres coincide with people's interests um, and there's specific interest in certain types of games. You know, not everyone is interested in role-playing games. Not everyone is interested in first-person shooters. And, and sometimes there's overlap, but not always. And so I, I've lost track, for example, of the amount of PvP first-person shooters that are out there these days. I mean, you have Call of Duty, you have <laughs> Valorant, you have... They're all trying to do something, maybe add something extra. My... And, and my own... Um, in my own tent, so to speak, uh, the RPGs, which is kind of what I've always played the most, um, and I, I, I've expe- I mean, it is my main wheelhouse. That I've, I've played others, obviously. It's just, <sighs> it could be because there are only so many stories you can tell. I mean, there's always a bad guy, usually at least, and it's really how you tell the story, I guess, that differentiates it. But it's just, even that's been lackluster. Um, I think there are elements that people will bring up, and I would, you know, that for example, the people I think are inserting real-world politics in the games, which uh, depends on the angle you take, but uh, the angle they're taking I don't think is particularly good. Um, it's one thing to make a game, it's like Bioshock, for example, that has some message about, I don't know, markets or capitalism or whatever, but mm. it's very different from the kind of, well... Let's make sure our quotas are filled in this game and this message gets out there. Um, so I think, yeah, this paradox of choice is too much choice, too many games on the market, and too little of these games, as you point out, doing anything fundamentally different makes it so that you don't sometimes even want to play because it's, you know, oh, look, there, there are 20 different games in this genre. I guess I can play this first-person shooter or whatever. And um, that can contribute to just shutting down your your enjoyment your dopamine response pretty quickly. And I, I think that it might have something to do with, you know, obviously I'm older than you, but an age thing too, um, just in general, maybe you know, for the, apart from the very youngest of people. Because you pointed out, you know, they want to make money, Bobby Kotick being one example. I forgot the name of the guy who owns EA, but I'm sure he said similar things. And then there's the guy, I forgot the name of the CEOs, Ubisoft. But the thing is, the games are still selling uh, quite well. I don't know what iteration they're on in Call of Duty. It must be, you know, I don't know, 10, 11, some. Yeah, probably even more than that. Yeah, we're maybe we're getting close to 20, but it, it still works. People are still playing it. Some people, uh, younger people, are definitely going to hop on it. And then there's a generational thing in the sense of streamlining. I mean, I know, look, I'm somebody with, if you combine Special Edition with the with Old Rim, probably has something like 4,000 hours in total on Skyrim. It, I mean, it's <laughs> not, it's it's rare, but it's not totally unusual. 
Um, all, all modded, of course. I mean, there's only so much you can do. But mm. I'd be the first one to note that um, if you play bare bones Skyrim, it's extremely streamlined. I mean, everything that used to be a hallmark of of, of, of role playing games, stats to be very specific, and I could say why uh, was gone. You had a health bar, a stamina bar, and a magic bar. Okay, and the reason why stats are important, I still think they are, is because stats, if they're well implemented, force you to make critical choices in the game because the idea is you're not a god, you have to choose. So if you're a stealthy character, you're going to have to pursue things in a different way. And so maybe you have a high dexterity score, maybe high charisma, but you're going to have to, I don't know, you, you can't tank, you can't you know take on large crowds, whatever it might be. Um, that's going to help shape your character, make the experience more interesting. It'll allow replayability later and so on. Um, but they decide to you know, scrap that. And this has been happening in general uh, within the with the gaming with respect to complexity because there's this idea that I'm not totally sold on that complexity doesn't sell. I think it was God Howard who... I, 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 I disagree with that assessment, but go on. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with your disagreement, Sir Nero. Yeah. I just say, I think that, uh, they're, they're, look, we're not dead yet, the old folk. Uh, mm. We still would like, I mean, if I, <laughs> many of us would like games with that level of complexity. I mean, Oblivion, yeah, but it's not for us. We're, we're, we're not, um, in a in a sort of a decreasing fashion we're not the main audience anymore no no i agree um world of warcraft back in the day back in the first few expansion packs um obviously you level up you get talent points and you invest those talent points now if you want to raid with a certain character and a certain so there's a holy trifactor of, of of tanking of dps of healing you generally speaking have maybe one or two builds for dps for a specific character and uh you'd have at the end when you reach max level you have x amount of points back in the day you'd have some sort of room to to make decisions for yourself uh you'd have x amount of uh, of points of talent points that you could invest in things that gave flavor to your class if uh, you had a class and you really like being very mobile you know those final five or those uh, you know sort of three points somewhere in the middle of a talent tree you can invest invest those in being more mobile or in an interrupt or in snaring enemies etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes there's still uh, a semi cookie cutter um uh, layout that you go by but you you have a little more agency you can flavor things that the way you want to do them now that's gone this it's you you choose what specific talent tree uh and yeah you get some options but you know it it being for instance world of warcraft there's a lot of theory crafting a lot of uh, simulators are around and then it's like all right well this this option tree is the best for you these uh, talents are what you take end of story no discussion uh hardly ever do you get really a choice where you can say well i prefer this and that and the other um yeah and we've shifted away from that now i've, I've sort of thought all right why why because okay perhaps we're not the uh the primary audience anymore but what is so different if everybody already took the cookie cutter spec but essentially still had some agency in deciding what they could go with so it's it's one of those aspects. The only thing, the only other thing I can think of, um, this will play more for multiplayer games than it will play for single player games, uh, and that's balancing. Because if you have a game with a lot of different characters, lots of talent trees, um, and there is some sort of competitive nature to the game, be it PVE or PvP, um, you, you generally speaking want to level those characters, right? You want your DPS to give or take, do the same amount of damage, bring the same, give or take the same utility to a raid or whatever it is you're doing. That I could see as being perhaps being easier to streamline. Um, but it's, yeah, it just doesn't make the game, and it, it, it doesn't ruin the game, it doesn't break the game, but if you tally up a whole host of other things, it, it kind of takes away from the enjoyment to me. Yeah, I mean, that's, of course, especially World of Warcraft, and the case of 
older Elder Scrolls games in that general genre. As I said, they have this paradox of choice. Um, th their way of doing it, God Howard's way, was you know here you you you're not a class anymore. You just kind of do whatever you want. Mm. You can choose. You can literally swap standing stones. I mean. People don't think about the impact of this. I mean, if you're not into role playing, but imagine you're a character. You're supposed to be destined to a certain standing stone that's aligned with the very constellations themselves, and you can just randomly choose it whenever you feel like. It, I get it, you want more choice. So, you know, you don't have to be just where you can you can wield a sword and then you can shoot a bow and you can chuck a fireball. Okay, but uh, I'm I think though that. And this is, who knows, with God Howard, it's not ever clear what the... He has intimated that for Starfield, they will be bringing back some of these these older, more classically RPG elements. But even if they do, I'm just not sure, as you pointed out, that the, the, they'll just, they'll just kind of keep on doing this cookie-cutter thing. And I'm okay with repeating basic plots because you can only come up with so many plots mm, yeah I, I believe to say that uh, is is i mean it's like with music there's only uh so many variations of the same pop song and that's it and yeah. there's nothing new they've all been written and and that's it you can just give it a different flavor like you as in regards to story i'm fine with this like halo for instance is just a by and large a copy of the bible i'm okay with that it's just it's literally the a space jesus that you're fighting as or Mm -hmm. Well, fighting against, if you will, absolutely no problem. But um, they make the characters interesting, or the setting interesting, and and some depth to it all. It 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 has to have something, it has to have certain X factor, and it not not even the story in and of itself, but uh, what I know. So I'm I like tinkering, and I like um, if we're talking about first person shooters or any sort of shooter, I, I like. Uh, being able to just modify my weapons uh, as as much as possible. So in a, a game like Armor 3, uh, which also allows modding, yeah, it gives you a rid ridiculous amount of options where you can even from not just barrels, but the color of your barrel and, and, and how many lasers do you want, all of them, what colors, etc., etc. Even that's largely taking away. And if it's still there and the latest Call of Duty is a good idea, yeah, you now have this weaponsmith uh, uh, thing. The weapons still kind of all feel the same. Mm. So, uh, yeah, games. I just you know, there's there's the the cookie cuts a problem in and of itself. Again, whatever. If if that's how they think that the game will sell, uh, the game will be appealing and the the shareholders will be happy. Okay, up until a certain degree, but for me and you for other people who want something more I, I you know i'm wondering is it it can't be that dif difficult to still add that element in yeah the story yeah i mean that that as i said perfectly okay with with quote unquote cookie other stories maybe you have interesting companions or there's some element of that the, the, of their story within the bigger story that, that's interesting but I mean, this this we are talking about this, and then we have this other. I mean, I'll call it the elephant in the room. It's not really, really. It's kind of probably bigger than an elephant, but it's just that we've reached a stage now where, frankly, very predictably, if you hear games coming out and there's even a modicum of hype behind it, just assume it's not going to be good. <laughs> just, just that's <laughs> yeah. you laugh, but it's true. I mean, I'm I kind of I've been up and down but that's kind of my 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 view i i was mildly interested for example in this hack and slash action rpg um dark alliance because it takes place in forgotten realms and dungeons and dragons and I have a background in that and you know i looked at player reviews i heard youtube reviews and you know you don't always want to trust everything a youtuber says but it's just all the problems and so the this issue with either unfinished games with i mean Obviously, you weren't super hyped for, for Cyberpunk, and people had bought into the hype, but the, the, the list is, is virtually endless. You just assume something's released and just assume it's going to be unfinished. And sometimes you want to cut people some slack, I guess. 
Mm. I think the last game I was super hyped for was Bio Mutant, and I, ironically enough, I returned it and you didn't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's I don't think it's a it's a bad game. I just think it was a bit overpriced for what they were asking, and and I think in a couple of months it might be a, a solid choice. Uh, who knows? But um, I yeah, it, it's just I think it's difficult to temper expectations between you get hyped or you're just going to go in with an absolute sense of cynicism and just say. Oh, you heard about that game coming out? And you're just saying, yep, yeah, that'll be another flop, or it's going to take half a year to fix all the bugs, so just wait. And... Which has been my point of view. I, you know, the, the the last year or so, you've you've sometimes sort of uh, had games where you were mildly hyped, and I just had to, like, nah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be anything. Look, I, hold it's... on, hold on. I wasn't hyped, hyped. I was just, I no, was hoping, no. I was hopeful that maybe this time. Maybe this time it would be slightly better, or it, it wasn't be a... full speed ahead. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. And it's um, like I said. Uh, so you sent me a link, for instance, for for one of these uh, Bethesda games from E3, uh, Redfall, mm. I think it is. Look, from the onset, I can tell you, it's like it's the umpteenth uh, co-op game ever since. Um, what's it called? Left 4 Dead, especially mm. second one. We just had a huge deluge of just co-op games. Um, but when you take a step back and you look at them, they're all very similar. And if you bring one out in the market now, you have to differentiate. You have to be different, otherwise you'll just you'll just largely end up in in I don't know in limbo. The game is just not going to have that big of a following. Um, so there's less money continuously coming in, less incentive to keep the game game going. Um, you know, and that that's assuming that you do, a, a, which is probably the case, something cookie cutter esque. Because from that trailer, I didn't see. Yeah, I know it's not a gameplay trailer, but I didn't. There's no information for me that says, "Oh, yeah, this is going to be different." Other than, well, it's got vampires and um, quote quirky characters. Mm. And that frankly doesn't do it for me. Yeah. T- to be fair, I-, I wasn't hyped about the game. What I thought was no. most interesting about it was. That Redfall people originally heard this uh, Red Mar- Redfall trademark some years ago, and they immediately assumed it was related or was going to be the name or some sort of cover name for the next Elder Scrolls whenever that happens. And although I could make a prediction, and that's and and they realized it was it wasn't that at all. And so, I mean that that was kind of what was interesting about it. I didn't think. I mean, yeah, the vampire aspect was. Yeah, I know. I know you like the vampire games. I like. I know you like those. But yeah, like I said, that that. I mean, if it's just left for that reskin with vampires, then what's the difference? Why why pay it for this game if I can play a game that's well over ten years old and it's the same thing essentially. Fair, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm. It it is that repetition, and I I don't know. Maybe this is just me. If it's partly an age thing, I mean, I've gotten a lot. Well, I'm just not as sentimental as I used to be. And the last time I remember being extremely sentimental was probably the Mass Effect series. I haven't gotten Legendary because I just don't think I can replicate that. Um, mm. That is Legendary Edition, but it could be an age factor uh, too. That, as you pointed out, this is. The demographic has shifted. They're not catering to older people. And the youngest people haven't had these, you could say, formative gaming experiences. So maybe for a younger person, the stuff is not new at all. Mm-hmm. Um, or sorry, rather, rather completely new. And as a consequence, they, 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 they love it. And for the rest of us, kind of, oh, this is just old hat. This is another example of, of XYZ, whatever. It could be that too. But I look yeah. fo- forward to the gaming uh, industry. And I just think, I look towards it and just think there's it, something would have to just blow it, blow me out of the water to really think oh, I really want to play this. I mean, I'm looking at the Steam sale now. It arrived yesterday. Yeah, it looks okay, I, I guess. But it's not good enough to really make my mouth water. And I guess that's something that I feel. Miss, you know, I have in general kind of this condition of anhedonia where I don't really get a lot of pleasure out of pretty much anything, but it, it seems really extreme with the gaming and it I yeah, I'm 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 
I don't think I'm going to give up gaming, uh, but I, I, def I definitely play a lot less than I used to. Um, and it's a lot of it has to do with the things you mentioned. You've uh, reassessed your dir directives. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things that I've noticed, and especially uh, with, with COVID, is that a lot more people play. And not just, you know, people that, that would typically be you and me, or even uh, a slight deviation from that, that, you, yeah, you know, that are not necessarily gamers, but are in that realm, but just Joe, Joe Schmo also playing, uh, and a massive number of that. I think that also contributes uh, to to the shift in... Or what's being um, what's being given to gamers? What, what type of games? The, the quality, the content of it, uh, and also just a very strong general shift to social aspect of gaming. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if what you describe right, you, you, that you want to play a game that you know really grabs you. That it's a really great game. I wouldn't be surprised if people that have not experienced this or aren't particularly looking for it still have the same experiences but through the social aspect of it yeah like getting together and playing you know as you pointed out a, a kind of co-op game along the lines of left for dead or what have you that's been my observation certainly i've noticed a lot of people just they play not because the the experience itself is amazing but because there are other people yeah. invested but mm. that's still leaves a gaping hole in the the crisis of uh, of single play a uh, single player rpgs mm. and i mean whatever you think about what happened with cyberpunk yes it was overhyped people bought the hype but it <sighs> We'll put it this way: it fell it it fell short of their previous title in terms of it's completely different genre, obviously, but it didn't deliver a Witcher esque experience. And of course, companies are always judged on what they previously done. They're, what else are you supposed to do? You know, Witcher three, Witcher three was this huge success, catapulted them to international fame. Then they came up with all these slogans, da da, and. For me, that's that's much more important than than the co-op stuff. I mean, co-ops are just uh, kind of a dime a dozen. Mm. I want to see potentially interesting single-player games that can really get the noggin joggin or just are, are captivating. Are I mean, obviously there's gonna be some repetition, of course, always. But oh, that that's very important. But go on, I'll, I I do have something to say about that. Yeah, but that I mean. I think that was what, well, for me, why say Cyberpunk was such a blow because uh, it, it made it seem like Witcher Three, as well as some other titles, were sort of freak occurrences. And I've noticed a lot of these, not exclusive to even single player games. Uh, I, hold your thought, please, if I just might continue a bit. Mm, yeah. Um, back in the day, as far as I'm aware, Mass Effect 3's multiplayer was not super well planned i mean yes they they want they planned it but it wasn't this thing okay we're gonna we're gonna do this and that and then or it'll be really big they just put it in there and people really latched on to it myself of course included and it became a a wonderful success it was you know fun and and it, it was just a good co-op experience and mm. then they tried to replicate it i think in in the drama and it just was meh and I think that a lot of these times, a lot of times that these games are kind of, I don't call them one hit wonders, but they're sort of flops in a, in a way. And we're lucky to get the flops because they're enjoyable. I mean, maybe Mass Effect, although there are a lot of issues with it, especially towards the end, was <laughs> a flop too. Um, I mean, obviously Bioware has been long dead in, in anything but name, but um rather than something planned so maybe cd project red maybe we know there shouldn't be any, any expectations because witcher 3 was just a flop and and maybe cyberpunk is more reflective of what they usually would put out i don't know so please yeah yes um and in some way what i the the thought i had is it does coincide so um to go back to the Witcher, to go back to the, to Cyberpunk, I, I, 
I've played both. I haven't finished Cyberpunk, but I and this is fundamental. And in hindsight, it grinds my gears. Uh, I did the entire map or most of it. And but I'm, what I mean by that is that um, uh, not just in in that game, but in many games, I like I've explored everything. I've done all the little quote unquote side quests. You know, I've unlocked these boxes. I've collected this. I've looked at the murals. Blah blah blah. This that and the other. It just it. In hindsight, it's so extremely boring um, because it, it doesn't feel like you're act actually progressing into the game. Oftentimes, uh, your character's progression, and I don't mean story-wise, but how much money do you have? What does your gear look like? Um, how many talent points do you have? It's all locked behind that, behind doing these sort of really mundane things or just things that aren't particularly interesting. Uh, Assassin's Creed has this problem as well. Well, uh, you know, how many fucking towers do you want to jump off of? It's it's just not that interesting. Far Cry, same story. How how many uh, this that or the other things do you want to have gathered before you you know you know can carry more ammo? It's just it's not interesting. It's not engaging, uh, and it's it's just there to to constitute as filler mater material. But if I buy a game. I don't necessarily want fill. Well, I, I re actually really don't want the filler material. And what, for instance, The Witcher did differently is that yes, there is filler material, but it's dressed up nicely. It's dressed up um, as a as a side story, as sometimes really amusing side stories where you have to escort these pigs that are yeah. actually just humans. That's for it. Look, it's it's just there to give you another point to invest. But it's amusing, right? It's amusing the fact that you can, um, I forgot how you do it, but you can read their minds. Um, they're just literally talking about stuff, pigs. That makes a, a, a game engaging. That makes it fun. And, and, and in such a scenario, I don't really mind the fact that it's uh, some of the, the, the sort of character improvements are locked behind doing things for it. But if I then contrast this to, um, to, to Cyberpunk, uh, yeah, it's not that fun. It, it, no, I've, I've no, said this several times. That's one of the elements. That's that certain thing that's missing from a lot of games. And if I want to hook that into um, Mass Effect, um, it's just a co-op game. The gameplay is, is solid, right? You have uh, a pretty good balance between sort of your gunplay and your quote unquote magic play. It's not magic, obviously. You're using a nominee tool or you're using uh, biotic forces. Um, that worked well, but um, it's still part of the you know of a bigger picture. It's still part of the story. It's still part of you see sort of these enemies that you fight in the main game uh, more often, uh, and. Because the main game, yes, I know the ending and and all oh, bless Marauder Shields and all that. <laughs> um, that Marauder wasn't Shields. all that great, but the the uh, the universe, no no pun intended, therein, that is pretty great. Like I, I thoroughly enjoyed the universe from even from the technical things, how um, Element Zero works, how it works in in propelling uh, spacecraft and, and what have you not. And so playing that multiplayer bit still sort of hooked into that, and that made it. Um, yeah, yeah. Fun. that's kind of my thing why I kind of had a modicum of interest in Dark Alliance because yeah I'm interested in, in the D&D universe mm. um, the funny thing about Mass Effect and Marauder Shields you know, God bless him uh, for, for the young people or not Mass Effect Mar Marauder Shields is this sort of he's like a final character basically <laughs> a final character before you get this really crappy ending in mass effect uh, three but yeah i mean they were ready to go with um with the original do you know what the original i mean I'll, I'll tell you and tell the audience you know what the original ending was or rather the original story that they scrapped yeah i know but go on yes because apparently people had found out about and they were just worried yeah that the reapers in fact were there to uh, prevent entropy from overtaking the universe and that would have been a much more interesting choice it would have really really finished off the series in a great way which you know, to me it didn't really finish it didn't finish off in a great way so i think that this kind of a side issue i guess um 
Yeah, the setting is important if you have a personal attachment. With me, as you mentioned, you know, vampires, they kind of do something for me. If mm. something is vampires, I'm going to be more open to it. Um, and But there's another example of they were going to release Vampire uh, Bloodlines 2, and it turned into a kind of woke war, and even Paradox that were publishing decided to scrap the whole team and just hire somebody else to do it. It'll probably be never be released. But, um, yeah, there's just nothing, I guess really the conclusion you have to come to is that there's nothing to, to really look forward to on the gaming front. Now, of course, gaming channels will talk about things and, and what have you, but it's their job. You know, they're, they're, they're there to talk about how, how this title is coming out and how good it is and, and whatever. And yeah, I think that people increasingly going to be forced into alternatives as in alternatives to gaming simply because <clears throat> the titles are not not as compelling as they used to be. I'm still open-minded, I have to say, for the record. I'm not of the mind that uh, you know, there'll never be anything. There are um, a few titles in the future that I'm somewhat open-minded about. I'll probably wait for reviews. My Starfield, it's been claimed, called, a sort of Skyrim in space, but with more RPG elements. We'll see. I'll see what the reviews are like. Hmm. Uh, but then there's Avowed, which Obsidian is working on, which takes place in a universe that I'm quite fond of, so I definitely have an interest in that, which will be their own version of Skyrim. Not really Skyrim. I think it's going to be significantly different in a lot of ways. But So, I don't know. I, I, there's still things out there that I'm I don't want to say, looking forward to, but it's not this deep ache that I used to feel towards certain no. titles where I just thought... I remember um, with Mass Effect multiplayer when they would release some new DLC and I would find out about it at work because at the time I was working in a warehouse and I would just I would just be giddy beyond all measure and I couldn't wait to get home to uh, try it out and it was yeah, it was a big deal but yeah that just doesn't happen anymore um, and when I do buy things it, it, it often is because anyway, I got Assassin's Creed Valhalla just because I like the idea of medieval England Vikings. Is the game amazing? <laughs> no way. It's not even super good. It's okay. It's not bad, bad, but I just kind of like the the setting and I like the history and that sort of thing. And I and I bit the ball, I bit the bullet on it for that reason. I, I had no, I wasn't disappointed. I had no illusions. I you know it's Ubisoft, it's Assassin's Creed. But I, you know, the setting historically is interesting to me, so I'm going to enjoy that. And it was decent, or it has been, and whatever, and you know, it, it's fine. Um, but that's probably a better way of going into games in general, sort of knowing what to expect. But as far as other games, uh, whenever they're announced that don't have that certain setting that that appeals to me, or a, a kind of theme like vampires, I'm just going to, eh. unless unless the you know their headlines saying X company released a game nine out of, you know nine point nine out of ten and the Steam reviews are just just there's no negative ones and this is the you know, maybe I'd be convinced by that but yeah I think for a lot of people it's it's I wouldn't say time to move on from me necessarily entirely but uh, I just play less than I used to and I'm, I'm just not as animated by it and uh, yeah that's it's I guess good in a certain way, especially if people find more productive things to do. But mm. it it's not a good sign. I really think it's a it represents a kind of crisis in the gaming world that's not really talked about very much. Biggest one for me just being there's these unfinished, incomplete, broken games that are released, and then you just having to wait around for a long time. And I mean. Maybe I'm just imagining it, but I don't think it used to be quite as bad, or maybe it was, and we're just I'm just misremembering things. But um, yeah, I mean, in your case, you have your motorcycle, so it's kind of yeah, correct. You know, your motorcycle um, is kind of like your game in a way. Yeah, look, uh, for me, uh, hobbies have have shifted. Um, yeah, that that's just the case. Um, and I don't know whether that says more about riding around on a motorcycle or whether it says something about the state of gaming. Um, but what I wanted to get back to is, uh, yeah, you mentioned like there's just specific things that you like, right? You, uh, the, the the Assassin's Creed game. 
that's that's entirely fair and it reminded me of something i uh used to read quite a lot of gaming magazines uh when i was younger and one of them specifically when they did their reviews always said look we're trying to be as objective as we can um when we're not we'll be completely transparent about it because some of our reviews like or dislike certain games or certain features or certain and uh in history parts or whatever it is uh and they they always disclose this and always whenever they score a game um they don't oftentimes there'd be a remark or even a double score like all right if you really like racing games um then this you know this game is is probably more valuable more fun more this that and the other for you um than if it weren't the case or if you really like tinkering with this in games then it's more worth to you. And if that's a perfectly, um, yeah, that's a perfectly acceptable reason to like a game more. Like I said, I like, you know, a, a game. If it's a first person shooter, um, please, as many weapons as possible, as many attachments, so I can make the most ridiculous builds with it. That I thoroughly enjoy, uh, just as you do enjoy certain historical periods. Uh, what I've noticed, however, and this is, um, we've, we've had this conversation, like, uh, have you seen the reviews? Have you read the reviews, Spe specifically YouTube ones? I don't, um, because it's just completely overhyped. Um, you just hear it in the voices of people when they do their reviews. Um, I find them oftentimes not uh, very objective, and it, it, it just, you know, if, if that's all I had to go off, in buying my games, I'd be done with gaming that much faster because in a lot of the cases, uh, the the games are just overrated, overgraded for what they really are. Although, yeah, that's fair, though, with a lot of reviews. I mean, obviously, if you're, as I said before, if you're a gaming channel, it's your job. Some There's some decent reviewers that do decent reviews, and some of them, the, for example, Dark Alliance just... From I would say trusted sources, people I would trust or I think are, are reasonably fair and balanced, gave it a, a crummy review, and I just thought, okay. Um, then I read the Steam reviews, so I mean, sure, sometimes they 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 overpraise, they overhype, but uh, there's some decent ones out there, and it's just kind of a good. It's not perfect. It's a, it's a decent parameter to go by, uh, especially if you don't know if you want to spend the money and the money's tight or whatever uh but yeah i i think that sometimes reviews can be well look what happened the fiasco of cyberpunk mm. a lot of this was the fact that reviewers themselves had been deceived by some manipulation unfortunately that cd project red had done with footage and and whatever so they yeah they reviewed it very positively it even initially it got pretty good reviews i think and then it kind of the reality set in later and it's kind of yeah uh empty yeah the i think you brought this up the, the world just feels empty and there aren't yeah cool, it does cool quests like and the witcher the pig one i like the werewolf one with the mm -hmm. uh jealous sister there yep. there are tons and even the little I don't know. The, I remember in the beginning when you're hunting down the griffin, and there's that hunter who helps you, and then he, if you actually bother to hear his stories, yeah, he was you know driven out because and the girl say, "Oh, you're a monster," and it's like, "No, I just, I just like screwing men up the ass," kind of thing. And like, oh, that was kind of an interesting <laughs> twitch, uh, t twist, and things like that. Just none, none of that's in there as far as I could tell. Um, it was just a lot of just basic fetch stuff. Get me a. I don't know, get me a, a data cache or whatever, bring it back to me, do this. And yeah, I don't know. It's um I, I I'm probably not going to, but I, I probably should learn how to ride a motorbike, uh, because that seems to be the <laughs> the solution to these uh these problems. Now of course there are always gonna be certain types of games that appeal to certain people. I'm I'm want to say for myself, I'm not condemning anyone who's still enjoys gaming a great deal or feels uh really attached to certain genre. like i said i i bought a game that by definition is mediocre uh, assassin's creed valhalla just because of the setting I, yeah. the gameplay isn't amazing it's way too easy uh, the story is eh, there's some 
decent stuff. There's some decent, but it's nothing. But I just like the setting. And yeah, that but that, that goes back to what we mentioned earlier. Like that has something going for it that yeah. appeals to you. Maybe not in general. Maybe in general, yeah. it's just an average game. But a very specific aspect appeals to you. That's what you like. Mm. And I don't have any problems with that, but I do have by and large problems that, and that is the reason why I just, you know, now, now, uh, buzz around on, on two wheels is that a lot of games, um, if you take away that, you know, that individual thing you like about it, just don't have much going for them. It's just template, insert, wrap up, sell, and on to the next one. Yeah. Well, you haven't revealed your plan for, you know, the, the GPU that I, uh, huh. when I had swapped, I mean, yeah. you know, a, I gifted you and I think it's a 980 Ti that's on, seems to be on its last leg. What's going to happen when that finally decides to just. Uh, yeah, it seems to, uh, seems to, yeah. Wanting to go, uh, you know, wants to become a pensioner, wants to wants to stop doing its uh, thing, and if it really does end up being a problem, because at this point it's just drivers crashing, it doesn't matter what drivers I install, uh, previously previous ones or not, mm. just occasionally everything just completely blacks out. If it dies, I'll bury it, and for some time I don't see myself buying another GPU. Um, I do have other things going on in my life, but there's just there aren't all that many games. I can I can name two games that I'm sort of looking forward to. That's Battlefield. That's a guilty pleasure of mine. Battlefield, you know, opposed, as opposed to other first-person shooters, has the has the whole destruction thing going for it. Hmm. Uh, and squad play. And the second game would be um, the new Total War Warhammer Three. That's due out this year. Uh, I do like my strategy games, but other than that, I really can't. You know, I've I've seen so many so many titles uh, uh, come by and and still to be released from what is it disintegration and and uh watchdogs uh uh yeah the worlds too i think yeah. it just doesn't you know doesn't tickle my fancy yeah. um so yeah what do you do you ride on a motorcycle uh for me um well i said mentioned avowed the reason why i'm of all the games i'm most attached to that idea because uh it Avowed is, it, well, to, for the audience, if you're not familiar, it's based on the isometric series called Pillars of Attorney, which is always crowdfunded and mm. was very much ca uh, meant to cater to sort of the older gener generation for the most part. It's uh, it's an excellent world design, interesting story. All these things are there. But Obsidian never really had the, the resources with crowdfunding, you know, a million here, three, four million. I think they had four million for the second one. It's just not a lot of money in terms of game. But then Microsoft uh, purchased Obsidian. Mm -hmm. And now they have a proper working budget. And I'm hoping that with, say, Avowed, they will obviously retain the world. They, it's it's clear, that much is clear they're going to do so. But they have to make an effort to appeal more to the mainstream. So it will be something like first person or it won't be a party-based game. Probably not, which isn't the end of the world. But I'm hoping they they keep the story elements. They have good storytelling. Um, they keep it interesting, and um, it's it's become one of my favorite uh, fictional settings. Frankly speaking, Aeor is what it's called. So mm -hmm. if and when that comes out, which I think 2023 is not unreasonable, I I'm, I will probably end up getting it if I'm still around, um, just because. Well, setting. I, I've played the other games. I've enjoyed them. Uh, they have an interesting twist, and uh, they're 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 definitely unique elements. I guess that's what kind of the, apart from that. Um, that's the one I'm saying. I'd actually I'm looking forward to that right? without question. Uh, I, I doubt it'll be a complete flop. I have some confidence that it will be an interesting game. Eh, Starfield, you know, whatever. A little more than a year from now. I'm open-minded. I like exploration. I'm less uh, sold on the space setting, but uh, it it could be interesting, especially if it turns out that God was God Howard wasn't lying as <laughs> he usually does. You know, no, we're going back to our roots. There's going to be more background. In this you can choose your background. Like, who knows? Well, when it arrives, we'll see what what it actually does. Um, you know, I, I, will it just work as as it's often said, or will it not just work? <laughs> And other things just seem to have, well, dissipated. 
I was originally looking forward to the Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines 2, but that went through just a, I don't even know how to describe it. They Paradox hired this woke studio in Seattle, and they they're going one direction, but then they fired the writer, and then they followed some fired some other writer, and then they just decided we're scrapping the whole thing, and we're going to hire somebody new. So I can't really look forward to that. Um, and I played, and then of course there are titles that I played that I really enjoyed, but just never received a sequel because they didn't sell very well because you know, reasons. And I guess if, if I'm still around by then, um, my uh, prediction for Elder Scroll Six will be something like 2027. I guess I'm looking forward to that, although I think we will all not be surprised about how unremarkable it is compared to previous iterations. We will have waited some uh, 15, 16 years, and you'll still be hop skipping up a mountain rather than properly climbing. I mean, that's going to be just something we can expect. But apart from that, yeah, there's just nothing... Nothing really stands out right now that I'm, I'm really uh, gung-ho about or deeply interested in. Um, yeah, I'm open-minded, but uh, yeah, just nothing. And, in, and as far as co-op games, there just doesn't seem to be anything that really tickles my fancy either. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I do play a lot less. Uh, I guess I need a motorcycle or some equivalent uh, hobby, but the gaming world is, is not what it used to be. I mean, that's good for other people, um, but... Absolutely. I look at uh, there's a huge bulk of games. Um, I'm, I'm sure they're fine, uh, but it's just been done too many times. And if you've... Uh, and I guess that's my biggest pet peeve, uh, and the one I mentioned is... It's been done so often that, you know, we've seen it all. And that my pet peeve is then um, this this sort of content that's just filler content, essentially, without any reason or rhyme, you know, hiding talents or hiding weapons be, behind really boring activities just so you can fill well, up the game, just so you can get in, in the hours. That's my biggest pet peeve is just I, I don't want to do things... Uh, that are not particularly interesting, so I can do interesting things later on in the game. That it occurs to me we haven't even mentioned that another elephant in the room, which is uh, microtransactions and just the the money after the money. You pay for the game, and then mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that annoys me. I don't do it because it's I'm not invested in Assassin's Creed. All the so the new Assassin's Creed genre, starting with um, the one in Egypt Origins. And then, then the one Odyssey that there there are certain types of gear that you it's almost impossible not to have to spend money in, in order to get it. And you can there's certain opals, there's these stones in the game you collect, and there's a vendor that you can go to, and yeah, you can buy some of the stuff, but it's all on rotation, it's random, and it's it's never entire sets or anything. So it's you're basically if you really really want that stuff, you're gonna have to pay for it. And apparently it works, um, and that's another element that really has made gaming just meh. People, oh, oh, I totally forgot Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, looking forward to that too, <laughs> just because D and D played Baldur's Gate. Say what you want. Yeah, I, that's. But yeah, I mean setting, and I I have early access to it. I'm I'm not gonna lie about that. So I'm looking forward to that. But um, a lot of companies just they have this sort of ongoing pay schedule in a single in a single playing a single player game that doesn't really make sense from a consumer perspective but i, I guess it makes sense from their perspective people are going to buy the stuff and spend money it's a massive massive industry massive amount of money and yeah it's that you bring it up look i've, I've left that behind uh, uh already a while ago it's uh I, in my life i haven't spent that much i mean i spent a lot of game uh, sorry a lot of money on games a lot of money on hardware but relatively little on on microtransactions i think in the last 10 years if it's 200 euros it would be a lot i think more like 100 in that realm mm. i'm excluding expansion packs uh you know if if a year two years later on uh, an expansion pack of value comes out for a game yeah obviously i'll buy it if it's good it's good but yeah uh, the whole yeah i mean it, this has been 
you know discussed over and over again uh I, several countries maybe europe wide have have already forbidden in a lot of games at least market transactions in the form of the uh, loot box thing justified i mean it's you're essentially paying for a chance to get it's nothing of value mm. so yeah, yeah. no I, and, uh, and it it can be pretty predatory which is Another thing, I've never been a huge whale or anything. That was the term they use to describe these people. Mm. Um, it's, uh, but it, it's another thing that really kind of taints the uh, the industry. Not every game is like that. I mean, for example, Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be a single-player game that will have none of that um, because their previous titles, Larian Studios, had none of that. But, you know, it's very... It's going to be very specific to certain types of people. You know, it's it's not going to appeal to a lot of people because of the style and all this. Other. Eh, that's fine. Um, there is some uh, a very sliver of hope in in those sorts of things, but I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But yeah, I, maybe I don't. I'm curious what the audience thinks about this because it's definitely been something I know. Unless universe, I wouldn't say universally, but generally, when I hear people are very enthused about games, is because of the setting or there's something about the genre but so gaming in general most people don't really seem to be into it the same way but maybe it's because i just i don't talk to enough young people about this stuff uh, it could be that as well who knows um i mean i'm a slightly older university student so i do well not now with COVID, but before that uh talked about gaming with younger people uh no by and large it's 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 just a run of the mill call of duty stuff um, mm. fortnite what have you not i think there's only one or two people that played something you know, still in the first place so, sorry in their first person shooter games or milsim uh, being armor but the rest is what you would expect mm. um yeah. which brings me to the point um you can look at things like a pendulum right it's now swinging in whatever this this path is, you think it'll ever swing back? You think we'll ever go back to to developers in some sort of indie capacity saying no, uh, we we don't want shareholders, you know, uh, breathing down. I on think we we don't want these responsibilities. We just want to make a game. Or, you know, well, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I've thought about this one quite a bit, and I, I think. There are two issues at stake. We didn't actually talk about this, but I think it's a, it's another. And there's so many elephants in the room. Uh, maybe I'm just overusing the phrase, but probably am. But the issue is this: very large room. One thing, gigantic room with gigantic <laughs> elephants and really, really big beemles, You know, uh, <laughs> but um, the thing is, when things get big and popular, they gain bigger audiences. Mm -hmm. The problem is bigger audience means more people that fit in the average. Not the average of anything specific, but just average interest, average whatever, average tastes. The the stuff that really was successful in its time, you look at sort of late 90s, early 2000s, isometric RPGs, was for a specific group of nerdy, mostly male people of a certain age, time, whatever. Mm. That That stuff still works for those people even now, but it's not going to be hugely popular, and so it's limited resources. Now, the issue, I think, in general, which I hadn't brought up, is yeah, things become popular, so it, it the average becomes the, the common denominator, and so people need to appeal to the average. I think, though, that there, there will be decently funded indie projects, maybe, or just side projects that are less beholden to simply shareholders and just making a buck and more about interesting ideas that could in fact um do decently and do well mm. uh i i know of a couple of projects on steam they're in early access that's another thing this whole early access is really kind of iffy but you know that they might turn out to be quite good if they're ever finished but I think in general, once things become popular, it's 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 over. It's GG, because 
they're popular. That is not the answer I was hoping for. Oh, oh, did you want me to say I was, <laughs> I was hopeful and yes. it'll be a renaissance? Well, well, I don't believe. I mean, people talk about pendulums and people like these sort of historical metaphors. Like, oh, the pendulum swung this way, so it'll swing back. Yeah, uh, that yeah. may be true, that may be not. But, but gaming's kind of new. We're not working with historical paradigms that go back millennia or centuries. We're just looking at some banners and hmm. And popularity um, killed the cat and there was no satisfaction to bring it back. The I don't see that happening. I, I see maybe, like I said, independent studios or compromises. I think Avowed, my prediction for Avowed will be a kind of, okay, we kind of need to meet the needs of the normie gamer, but at the same time, this is coming from this universe that we built for for a different sort of gamer, and so we have to be true and, and, and faithful to that person as well, so we'll find some comprehend. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not hopeful uh, about anything, really, when it comes to human existence, but gaming... I think I'm more hopeful about gaming than other things. Uh, yeah, like I said, there'll be, there'll be independent projects that I think will be good, and and in a way, it's good because they're not going to appeal to everyone. And so they can, I mean, I keep on bringing up this example. Baldur's Gate 3 will not be a game that I can just say, go play it. It's amazing. Well, it's not even finished. But because it's going to be very specific. You're going to have to be interested in turn-based. You're going to have to, like, one criticism, people, it looks like Divinity Original Sin 2. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to, like, dialogue and choices. And, you know, if you don't like that sort of thing, it's not going to be for you. But if you do, you might really, really like the game. Maybe. Th those sorts of things. And so I think, yeah, um, as, as long as people have, as long as there's some kind of choice and not everything is just shoved down everyone's throat, uh, it, there still could be um, some potential going forward. But I, I don't think that we just have too much choice, as I mentioned in the beginning. There's too much choice available. There's too much choice, then every marmalade tastes the same. That's mm. what's going to happen. Unless you go to the exotic shop that you know, sells the, I don't even know, call it marmalade, they call it something else. So I'm not very helpful. Uh, did you think that, you think that things are going to change eventually? Oh, or? no, I don't, I don't want to imply that, but no, uh, no just a, an amusing contract, uh, contrast, sorry. Um, you, you are more one to sort of I, I carefully, quietly hope that a game is going to be good, whereas I'm very skeptical that it will be, whereas, and, and on the flip side of that, I was slightly hoping that we'll go into i don't know what you want to call it uh, renaissance game. yeah something like that it's just games in the past and one that comes to mind is supreme commander it's a strategy game and it's just by and large a, a, a different meta game different sort of strategy um yeah you don't see games like that being made anymore uh just for a pure purpose of being made and it was just ahead of its time in some capacity, it is still ahead of its time. Um, I was just hoping that, you know, and whatever analogy you want to use, you know, the pendulum swinging the other way uh, or whatever, that we get something like that again. In addition to, you know, the brand of what we have now. Not that I particularly care about the brand of what we have now, but at least that people can choose. So, yeah. yeah I, I, was, I was quietly hoping that we'd go more into a direction where we have games that yes they're more niche um they may not look as polished or even you know that that is something i do uh, thoroughly enjoy soundtracks and games are phenomenal um mm. in a lot of games but yeah that, that looks and sounds um something like the games of yesteryear yeah mass effect 2 soundtrack will, will always be a, one that stands out to me um suicide mission uh, a couple others just uh, Jack, uh, what's his name? Doesn't occur to me at the moment, but uh, yeah, just brilliant stuff. But yeah, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't think gaming is over. I think no. it's it's not over, but it's um, it's not looking good. And for us specifically, for for, for us, us, yeah, it's it's there. I I just then again i'm I'm a weird guy you know i don't get excited about anything really so the part that's partly on me um i can't it's hard to tell with some of these gaming channels where their incentive they have to that's their job is to literally talk about games and on top of that they have to present a certain kind of image and be excited about what xbox says or doesn't say and 
they were paid um, to hype. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, I've mentioned a few titles I'm I'm definitely looking forward to cautiously, obviously. Mm. Um, but you have to go with the evidence. Um, and most of the evidence suggests that m- most of the games coming come out are going to be half finished uh, pieces of trash that aren't worth playing. But they, there are always some gems in the rough, you know. Um, uh, people discover valuable heirlooms in, in, in junkyards all the time. It just takes some searching. So it's possible that uh, it'll be a similar uh, situation going forward. Um, yeah. And so we've, look, we've, we've observed essentially this, this shift in gaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's become more social. It's become wider, but not as deep anymore. Um, the audience has certainly changed. It's a much broader audience, and uh, as in the games, will also change more towards that audience. Um, so I do, and as I've mentioned earlier, I do speak to younger uh, folk. Um, do you regularly speak to people like us in relation to gaming, and what do you see them, or have you have they told you what they're going to be doing with gaming? Is it like me, or is it, well, I'm just going to find a different hobby? I'm going to do, I don't know. Uh, I think or... most of them are like you. They're kind of just swearing off games, or, you know, I have one friend in particular who just, he used to really be into, um, bloody gods, what's the name of that? that game i think arcane is it maybe mm. i don't recall uh it's been a, but in any event it used to play a lot and he just kind of quit cold turkey and hasn't t- uh, touched a game since um younger people seem to be amused by things that i you know minecraft is big and things like that but i, I think a lot of them of the older folk have just never been big gamers to begin with or they've sort of moved on and more power to them mm. uh Maybe there will there will come a time after so much disappointment and so much senseless reiteration and just and, and, and low quality and all the things that we talked about where I was just thinking, hey, you know what? I'm just not gonna game anymore. It's just it's just whatever it is, it's just not for me anymore. I'm not there yet, but I it's not unimaginable for me to to think that of that as a possibility. No, I, I fall essentially in the same realm. I'm just slightly further on the spectrum, as in, yeah. You got a motorcycle, so. That, um, it, it's not that I'm opposed to gaming. There's definitely going to be games that I'll still play, but, um, yeah, it's it's not something, you know, I don't turn the PC on anymore to, to look forward to playing certain things or finding out about certain games in the future. It's same. not there anymore. Same. Hey, at least you have other things to look forward to. Can't yes, I do. Play, so. Yes, I do. Um, yeah. There are yeah. other things that, that you've observed in the gaming uh, world, gaming community. I think that uh, well, we've already talked about this. For a lot of co-op games, it's just much more of a social experience with you know with platforms like Discord or whatever. People just hang out and play. And uh, especially in light of the Pestilence, um, it's <laughs> become more popular. But... Yeah, I think most of the people I know that you know, kind of always the oldest, but I used to say play mastering multiplayer with their they're old. They, they play less than they used to in general. That might just be a function of getting older. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'm going to keep my eye on the on the gaming industry and and, and certain things. Um, maybe I'll find some gem in the rough on the Steam sale. I don't know. I think it's unlikely, um, but. Yeah, who knows? Anything's possible. Um, uh, but uh, to the audience, yeah, curious to see what you guys are uh, doing gaming-wise. It's been, yeah, it's been an interesting period for gaming, and maybe you have certain genres you like, whatever. That that'll that'll remain. You know, there'll always be those genres that still captivate people. And if I hear about a game that looks sufficiently vampiric. Um, I might have an interest in it. I, at least I'll, I'll be curious. So um, we'll just see. But uh, well, it has been uh, absolutely fantastic. Geweldig, um, as you guys like to say, <laughs> uh, to have you here and to uh, share your your observations 
Um, this is a function of the gaming market. Yes, correct. Well, yeah, I think a lot of us are there, but you know, I I have to say before it ends it, when Domira told me, initially told me, I mean, I, I guess I misinterpreted that. You know, he was he's if his GPU broke down, that he wouldn't reinstall a new or get a new one, and just he would just I, I kind of. Not, not for a long while now. I'm yeah, not, yeah, I kind of. It, it, it was weird, and maybe it's because I just, the way I think, and, you know, I just kind of view him as a gamer. I just thought, it sounded to me like, I'm getting a divorce, and we're never seeing, <laughs> and we're never seeing each other again. <laughs> and I thought, but obviously it's not like that. It's just, it's just, it's a, it, it's a, if you're a gamer, it's a big deal. My GPO go, GPU goes, I'm not, I'm not reinstalling anything. I'm just, whatever. It's just, it's just over kind of thing. Oh, it is what it is. I mean, it, 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 this market is not necessarily or by and large for me anymore. Um, yeah, I get it. Games that are released. Yeah, that's, it's, yeah, I can only replay old games that I enjoy so much. Um, and then it just becomes this sort of, um, yeah, equation where you just look at, all right, I've got X amount of time. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to bore myself with doing the same uh, vapid quest over and over again? Or am I going to pick up a new hobby? And, well, new hobby. Yeah. What I am interested in is, though, yeah, what the, uh, not necessarily what the audience sort of, things but for people that are in a similar situation uh how what what else they're going to do what other hobbies they'll take up and and just what led them to this decision what is a similar thing like uh, yeah i only have niche games i'm not being catered to you know i'm out or other, other things because i you know i've been following your channel for a while um, there's also a political uh angle there I, you know i'm wondering whether people will say no nah, it's just because uh Games have been just too much politicized, or whatever. It's, the it's part of it. The political stuff is obviously, if you're trying to, without getting specific, if you're trying to just cookie cutter for certain archetypes into a game, just to have them there, right? You just, you have to have this type of character, so make it like a a pink haired, uh, <laughs> you know, one eye is red, the other is 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 purple, and um, they have three breasts, and they have one penis in the front and a penis in the back. And I mean, obviously, this I don't think it exists. Um, and um, they have an elephant trunk, you know, hanging out of their ass. Either like, you need to have this character, and you just get put it in there. <laughs> then, yeah, that doesn't really make sense. Um, it's why I kind of brought up that little that little, little itsy bitsy sort of teaser from The Witcher, where yeah, they talked about because The Witcher Three universe, you know, that area is just. People have it rough. Everyone has it rough. It's another example of someone who has it rough. Like, yeah, they drove me out of the city. And why? Because he likes to bonk guys up the butt. And that makes a lot more sense. And it, you know, you just think, oh, that's well done. Rather than, the, okay, we have this and we have this and we got to have this. And the, the politicization, I mean, okay, I, actually, something before, because this is occurring to me. One thing that really bothers me a great deal, I have enormous pet peeve with, is. The effect, at least in RPGs and similar games, um, that the political stuff has on aesthetics, right? My view is that gaming, it can be realistic if you want it to be, but a lot of it really comes down to uh, the desire for an aesthetics that do, that doesn't necessarily exist in the real world. Or you could say is optimized. You, know, you want to see beautiful people, so to speak. You want to see... You know, the the pinnacle of 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 you know guy guys that that basically look like bodybuilders but with the mobility of Spider Man or whatever you know if only for aesthetic reasons and if whether you're straight or not and then for girls you want to see the the large jugosauri and the usual right and then you want to, they need to look beautiful whatever that I think is a real thing I've noticed this trend to just I don't want to say dumb down but just just we want to see your average, you know, fat, overweight, muffin top, what as a character is not <laughs> inspiring. You know, in fact, I'd rather see the the, the creature I described with the elephant coming uh, trunk coming out of its ass. It's just not inspiring. It's like because people turn to fantasy because it's not reality. I mean, games for better are always a form of escapism, always with different for different reasons and motivations. But you want to escape to something nicer, ideally. 
you want to explore the aesthetics of something that that's nicer that doesn't exist in reality not have that reality thrown back at you. And that is definitely a serious element, particularly in RPGs. Um, it's not universal, but I've certainly seen it before Vampire was scrapped. I mean, they they absolutely trashed the aesthetics of characters. You just thought, well, what? What is this? I mean, make them, make them as average or as ugly as possible so what people can relate. But that's not what people want from fantasy. They want something that, 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 that elevates them, that puts them in a different dimension different space not the space they already occupy that's something yeah. that i do think is an issue uh i think you know bioware unfortunately i mean it, it i hate calling it by it's not bioware it's, it's a name they call it themselves bioware but the the artist formerly known as bioware that way <laughs> <laughs> they they have done this routinely you could just see i remember for example going from dragon age origins fantastic game you know great rpg loved it still do although i haven't played it in years where you had a i mean in keeping with the graphics generally aesthetic characters the women look good the, the men look everyone look good yeah maybe it's not the most realistic thing whatever and then you fast forward to something like uh, Dra a dragon age inquisition which i played twice because i was like maybe i missed something the first time and you have the usual stuff you know uh, somebody tells you that they're actually, you know, a different gender. It's being forced down your throat, a different gender, or the yeah, other's gigantic minotaur-like character that just likes screwing everything that that walks, and um, and the other characters are just and the the one straight option available in that was a would appear to be a forty-something short-haired, scarred woman that I mean, wasn't terrible looking, but you just thought this is not exactly what you'd be into, so. I think you know the, the politics has affected certain aspects of it. Um, the politics don't have very much to do with microtransactions and just the sort of no. repetition. But in for, it's, it's aesthetics, definitely, depending on the genre. I, I I know I was a bit of a tirade there, but yeah, definitely has had an effect in that respect. I think so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a good observation. Um, I I knew of it. I just the games I play. I mean, the closest. Thing I come to that is with uh, Battlefield Five, which has uh, female soldiers with absolutely, and I, I recommend nobody look it up. Just horrid, horrid, horrid screams if they die. Uh, it's just really off-putting. Um, but I didn't play that installment too much, uh, uh, purely for gameplay choices. But yeah, that that is actually a, a good observation, um, just purely from the political point of view that it's had such a big impact on on certain games yeah gaming aesthetics is hit or miss and the if you have a company or developers that are particularly woke they're they're not gonna put it this way i don't think they'd use this term but they certainly want to uh make sure to uh, that you the, the evil male gaze is uh is not properly fed so uh, mm. whatever that means but yeah with, with at least with mods and certain games yeah the one thing we can always thank god howard for i'll just call him god you know, God, God is a good guy in the sense that God gives us um, the opportunity to mod games and experience mods, and His games are eminently moddable. So whatever trash is thrown at us, there'll be ambitious people who, for bizarre reasons, want to improve it, and they will. And you know that whatever God's imperfection might be, God will allow us to do that. So, and the aesthetic angle, there's that. A little bit that will go. Hmm. He's, he's a merciful God um, because he realized, he realized that uh, the flaw of his creation, he, he allows his other creations to manipulate his, his creation to improve it. <laughs> and it, it was kind of like a, 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 a safety measure that he, he built into the, into the creation itself. It's 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 it, it's not it's not for no reason that it's called the creation engine, you know. You know God, Howard, <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so there's that games that are moddable are, are also saveable so anyway uh well this has been uh fantastic uh there's nothing there's nothing uh better than to listen to uh domiro's uh, deep booming voice as he tells us as, as, uh, about his motorcycle and how well he's gonna probably be turning away from gaming for quite some time and frankly, it's it's good to have better things to do than than game, especially in 
today's and, and today's uh, drought of, of gaming as we've been discussing for over an hour now. So what can you do? Anyway, uh, do leave a comment, audience. I'm curious to see what you're up to in the in, in the gaming world. Uh, maybe you found something that could be appealing or maybe you're uh, surfing on similar currents. Uh, be interesting to see. Yeah, and if that's the case, then uh, yeah. Well, what specific reason you stopped gaming? Is it the same as we observed here, or is it completely different? Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining me. It's been a great honor. And uh, yeah, until the next time, may the gods watch over everybody, um, and may especially God Himself, with the uh, surname Howard, but obviously God, may He watch over us all. Take care. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.